Big Sarge, don't do it. All right, yeah, you got to do it. You ever seen those memes that be on, um, you ever seen those memes that's on social media where they be like, me, and then it be like, other me, like me. Big Sarge, don't do it. Other Big Sarge, no, you got to do it. Big Sarge, man, please don't do it. Other Big Sarge, bro, you owe it to the people. Big Sarge, bro, like some things you just got to let go. Other Big Sarge, mm -mm, give them that work. Alabama Crimson Tide fans, I have one question for you. What can head coach Nick Saban do before you finally give up on the Crimson Tide? Before you finally say enough is enough, I'm not an Alabama fan anymore. I'm not an Alabama fan anymore. I refuse to go to any more Alabama games. I refuse to buy any Alabama paraphernalia. I refuse to watch them on television. At what point will you say, I won't? What does Nick Saban have to do in order for you to say, I'm not going to watch him anymore. I just won't support the University of Alabama anymore as long as Nick Saban is the coach. What, 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 what would it take? Would it take him getting caught in like a, a cheating scandal? You know, like helping his students pass classes or something like that if he orchestrated it? Or what about if he got caught like paying recruits? Or what if he got caught paying students? I mean, pay, I'm sorry, paying athletes. Like athletes that already play for him. What if he got caught paying those, those uh, players? What if he was involved in a booster scandal where they were trying to get a top-notch recruit in and he was uh, part of passing off the bag? Like in what? What about if he got caught up in all those? Uh, what if it? What if Nick Saban was part of everything that went on at, at Baylor? At At what point, Alabama fans, do you say, "I'm done"? What can Nick Saban do? I know he's the king of Tuscaloosa. I know he's the king of Alabama. Know how I know? Because they, they instead of you know finding ways and money to donate to the educational system in Alabama. They just find ways to give more and more money to the University of Alabama. As long as you keep winning um, national championships, it is okay. Big Sarge, question. Why are you on Nick Saban all of a sudden? What has Nick Saban done to you? Why are you on Nick Saban? We know how you feel about college coaches. We got it. We understand. Why are you talking about Nick Saban though? What did Nick Saban do? Well, let me just tell you what Nick Saban did. Let me go ahead and read this, this for you. Let me go ahead and read this to you, okay? So according to USA Today, fired Maryland coach DJ Durkin lands consultant-like role at Alabama. Yeah, let me read this again. Fired Maryland coach DJ Durkin lands consultant-like role at Alabama. You all remember who DJ Durkin is, right? You, you didn't? Let me go ahead and read this to you. Durkin, who was hired as Maryland's head coach in 2015, drew scrutiny after one of his players, offensive lineman Jordan McNair, suffered heat illness during an offseason workout and died two weeks afterwards. Media reports a few months later character, characterized the culture within the program as toxic. Leading strength and conditioning coach Rick Court to... Uh, leading strength and conditioning coach Rick Court to resign while Durkin was placed on administrative leave. And then they brought him back and then they finally fired him. The president finally said, no, nah, man, listen, you got to go. There's too much scrutiny around you. Listen, I'm leaving next summer, so in, in summer 2019, but before I walk out this door, I'm going to fire you. Yeah, this is the same DJ Durkin who we've talked about earlier on Sports Talk with the Big Sarge. We've talked about DJ Durkin before, right? We talked about the former head coach of University of Maryland allowing his players to be called uh, female anatomy parts. We talked about his players being made to eat until they threw up. We talked about DJ Durkin being a part of a culture where this young man, Jordan McNair, passed away because he was telling them, hey, something isn't right, something isn't right. And they were steady calling him the female anatomy parts and cussing him out. While trainers stood there and watched him pretty much die. When he was telling them something was wrong, they were telling him, no, it's not. And then he passed away, and then all of a sudden it's, oh, I'm sorry. I don't know. But there was a culture, a toxic culture that surrounded DJ Durkin. And I know that you're saying to yourself, well, Big Sarge, that's not his fault. Oh, uh, yeah, it is. He's the leader. 
He's the leader. He's the head. It starts and it stops with him, the head coach. And now, Nick Saban gave him a job. So if you are a recruit, or if you are a player that plays at Alabama, and you know what this man did there, what is he consulting? Wait a minute, y'all. I ain't done. When we come back from the break, I got him. We'll be back. So, but getting back to uh, uh, the University of Alabama and Nick Saban hiring DJ Durkin, the former Maryland coach uh, who was fired earlier this year for, ha for, for fostering a, a toxic culture over at the University of Maryland for allowing a lot of things to go on there that shouldn't have went on. For allowing um, a lot of things that shouldn't have, shouldn't have went on. And I, and I just want to ask you, Alabama fans, because you all are deep. And you all are strong. And no matter what, you all stick together. And you always say, uh, roll tide, roll tide, roll tide. So are you rolling tide with this one? Are you rolling tide with Nick Saban hiring a man who let a, let a young man die on his watch? Are you rolling with that? Are you rolling with the young man who hired a strength and conditioning coach who gave him uh, uh, anything that he wanted, to, gave him power to do pretty much anything that he wanted to do? Now, I know that DJ Durkin couldn't be everywhere, but at some point in time, you had to hear DJ Durkin that these things were going on, right? You had to hear that these things were going on. And what did you do about them, though? What did you do about them? You did nothing. You know how I know you did nothing? Because you got fired. And when this young man, if this young man wouldn't have died, you would have still been the coach at the University of Maryland, and you would have still been allowing the, 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 the toxic culture to go on. So my question is, Nick Saban, what does DJ Durkin have to offer you? What does DJ Durkin have to offer the University of Alabama? And why isn't this a PR hit? Why isn't anybody else going off? I seen Paul Feinbaum, who is the biggest Alabama supporter. He's had his uh, discrepancies in the past, but I agree with what he said. He blasted Nick Saban. Why would you do this? What does DJ Durkin have to offer to? The University of Alabama. He ain't been there. He ain't been there to get you to to the playoffs. He ain't got you there to get to be undefeated this year. What does he have to offer? Nothing. Which is the same thing. So, but you shouldn't be surprised. You heard Keith call in early, and he said he's not surprised. I'm not surprised either. Uh, two years ago, did you or did you not, uh, Nick Saban, bring in a coach who was fired for being drunk? Steve Sarkeesian who was the head coach of USC, who is now the offensive coordinator for the Atlanta Falcons, by the way, who've lost five games in a row. But you brought him in. So what are you doing, Nick Saban? And what are you telling us? What you're really telling us is you don't care what we think. You don't care what we think. It does not matter to you one way or the other. I'm not an Alabama fan, so it doesn't matter to me. But what I am is I am a concerned fan that you allow a guy to come onto your staff who has been an intricate part of fostering a toxic culture at the University of Maryland. It was everywhere. You've seen it. You've seen it. It was on all the news outlets. You've seen it, Nick Saban. And yet you still allowed it. You still allowed him to come over. And listen, you, are, you hire all your staff. Can't nobody tell you nothing about your staff. You hire them. Hey, state of Alabama, Alabama fans, Alabama fans, you may not know this or not, but now uh, DJ Durkin is an employee of your state. DJ Durkin is an employee of your state. And what are you going to do about it? It's not going to be an uproar, right? Because as long as Nick keeps winning championships, it's okay. As long as he keeps winning championships, there's no, there's nothing that an Alabama fan can tell me. There's nothing that I can hear from Nick Saban. There's nothing that I can hear from the University of Alabama that will justify the hiring of DJ Durkin. So Nick Saban, let me ask you a question. You are in these African-American homes. You go recruit African-American players heavily. What are, you going to tell the, well, what are you going to tell this family when they ask you why would you hire the man who killed their son, who allowed their son to die on his watch? What can you tell Jordan McNair's family? How can you justify giving him a job to the family? Their son is never coming back. Never. 
There's no amount of money that the University of Maryland can give this family to ever bring their son back. And you go give him a job? And you don't want us to talk about privilege? You don't want us to talk about entitlement? And this family is still suffering from their son dying. And you give the man who allowed him to die on his watch a job. 